Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response to capital projects. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit me a like down below, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button too if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another video by Kurz Gazat called, What If We Nuke the Moon? <laughs> Let's take a look. Happen if we were to detonate a very, very powerful nuclear weapon on the moon. Would the explosion knock its orbit towards Earth, causing tidal waves and misery? Could the moon be destroyed, showering the Earth in a rain of meteoric death? <laughs> no. Nuke, a nuke is very small relative to the size of the moon. Um, there's no way it can possibly do that much damage. One interesting thing is there's not a whole lot on the moon, so... And the moon, there's no atmosphere. We'll see what happens. During the Cold War, the moon was a major target for space exploration and, you know, military bases. So the US Air Force commissioned a serious study into the... I love these images about <laughs> the idea of <laughs> these little birds putting nuclear weapons on the moon. It's awesome. ...effects of a nuclear detonation on the surface of the moon. But just quoting stuff is boring, so let's conduct a very important scientific experiment with an imaginary 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead about twice as powerful as the most powerful bomb ever detonated. The 100 megaton warhead was actually designed and built, but it was never detonated on the surface of the Earth. A 50 megaton one was called the Sarbama. Very powerful weapon give you a sense the uh, Hiroshima nuclear bomb was only about 15 kilotons and most modern nuclear weapons are on the order of 500 kilotons to 3 megatons so 100 megatons is massive we'll also place a number of curious astronauts around the moon as observers let's push the button and slow down time that might not end well for them because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so they might be susceptible to the effects of radiation at a greater range than you would from a blast on Earth. For the first few milliseconds, nothing much happens outside our weapon. Meanwhile, inside, high explosives send a shockwave to a radioactive metal core, compressing it so much that it reaches criticality and starts a nuclear fission chain reaction. The 100 million degree plasma created in this first stage sets off the second stage with atomic nuclei fusing like they do in the core of a star. Very briefly, now... All of this process happens on the order of nanoseconds. That's 10 to the minus 9th seconds. Weapon contains one of the hottest places in the universe. And only now, barely 10 milliseconds later, does the rest of the universe find out that anything has happened. There you go, you don't find out. The reaction happened ancient history. Milliseconds is a lot slower than nanoseconds. <laughs> As suddenly the bomb dissolves and a flaming star of nuclear death is born. So far, so good. But everything that happens now is very different from what we're used to on Earth because of one major difference. There's no atmosphere. As the fireball shines, it releases a flash of X-rays and thermal photons, a wave of silent heat which rushes outwards in all directions. On Earth, this heat would char and burn everything within a 50-kilometer radius at least. But on the Moon, without an atmosphere and oxygen-rich air, there's no burning at all. Also, there are no things to burn. The crunchy topsoil of the moon is made from silicate rock and metals chewed to dust by eons of meteorite impacts mixed with tiny traces of water. When heated by the explosion, X-rays from the fireball vaporize a thin cloud of rock from the lunar surface, while the unlucky dust that's inside the fireball melts into glass. Any 
I love how they point out the uh, minerals that exist on the lunar surface and how it would turn to glass. It reminds me of the detonations at the uh, White Sands Missile Range where it would actually, nuclear weapons would be so hot they'd turn the sand into glass. Astronauts watching the show within about 50 kilometers can expect to be fried. And now we begin to see one of the biggest differences between explosions yeah. in space and on Earth. On Earth, the atmosphere fights back against the plasma bubble. Its expansion is violently stopped within moments by the pressure of the atmosphere. But this is not good news. As the fireball rams the atmosphere, it produces the most destructive part of a nuclear explosion on Earth, the shock wave. Compressed air around the explosion rushes out faster than the speed of sound, shattering buildings and roaring so loud it ruptures organs. But on the moon, there is no shock wave. No atmosphere means nothing to impede the expanding explosion in space. On the moon, the fireball just grows in eerie silence as there's no... This is the exact opposite of the previous Kurzgesagt video I did called What Would Happen If You Detonate a Nuke in the Mariana Trench. If you haven't seen that one, go ahead and check it out. But there you have a lot of pressure. Here you have no pressure. <laughs> atmosphere to stop it or to give it a voice. This would be an amazing thing to watch from a safe distance. Unfortunately, there's hardly any safe viewing distance for a nuclear explosion on the moon. Without an atmosphere weakening the deadly ionizing radiation that can scramble DNA, anyone close enough to get a good look will be exposed to fatal amounts of radiation. But of course, that's not... That's true. Note that it's not actually green and wouldn't cause you to mutate or turn into the Hulk or anything like that. It would just kill you. While all of this happens, the explosion hammers against the moon, transferring about a tenth of the explosion energy into seismic waves, powering an intense moonquake. The moon is much smaller than the like Earth, the term and our astronauts will feel an inescapable violent shaking no matter where they're standing. Comparable to an earthquake of seven on the Richter scale, this shaking could seriously damage or even level infrastructure we might have built anywhere on the moon. Those who hit on the far side of the moon would have no idea it was an explosion. The quaking would feel like an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid had struck. And it's not over yet. Where are I love those animations. <laughs> um, explodes, the ground splatters like water when a rock strikes a pond. As the explosion pushes against the surface, it may excavate as much as 100 million cubic meters of dust and rock, forming a crater a kilometer across, while bedrock is pulverized to rubble. Debris is shot into the sky in every direction. Again, without an atmosphere, there's no drag to slow any of it down. Much of That's true, I didn't really think about that. It's going to create an asteroid uh, shower on all those uh, orbiting stations. Scattered never returns to the moon, <laughs> faster than escape velocity. A flurry of micro meteorites have been cast off to explore the solar system, many of which will rain down on the Earth, though few will be larger than pebbles. Any satellite, astronaut, mm. or space station in the way, though, will have a really bad time. Micro meteorites are launched at many speeds and angles, allowing them to spread all over the surface of the moon. Like bullets, they'll punch through our curious astronauts, no matter where they stand. Finally, our explosion comes to an end. On Earth, the fireball rises like a hot air balloon, forming a sort of stalk. As it reaches up, cooler air is drawn in around it, rounding the top into a mushroom cloud. But on the moon, well... That is a great explanation of how a mushroom cloud is. It's purely buoyancy and purely based on the yield of the device. It has nothing to do with the device being radioactive. No atmosphere, no mushroom. The larger the plasma gets, the cooler it becomes, and the less energy it has to make interesting or terrifying things happen. Within seconds of pulling the trigger, the bubble reddens and fades from view. It would be visible from the Earth like a star flickering to life, only to fade out right away. A spark, and then nothing. As the cloud of tiny debris reaches far above the surface of the moon, it's illuminated by the sun for a few minutes, giving it an eerie beauty for anyone left to observe the spectacle. What about the moon's orbit? It's basically unchanged. Yeah. Trying to move the moon with a nuke is like trying to move a truck by blowing on it. <laughs> Nuclear explosions may be big, but space is bigger. Our 
mighty explosion just leaves another crater. One among millions. Still, anyone on the moon will continue to not enjoy themselves. The material that ends up raining back to the moon is radioactive, and without any natural processes to wash it away or bury it, the surface of the moon will remain contaminated. Although, fortunately, the worst of the radiation will have decayed to a level comparable to natural levels from cosmic rays in about a year. In conclusion, we can say with confidence that while the moon itself does not care about being mute, and will barely notice, using the moon as a nuclear test ground kind of ruins it for everyone trying to spend some time there, or to build something useful. So maybe we should just not do that. This was our... <laughs> I love how blunt they are about everything. Um, yes, that was uh, that was very good. Uh, I like how they explained that um, it would mainly just affect the people living there rather than the actual moon, because the moon has been bombarded with asteroids that are big, would cause a bigger explosion or yield than um, even a 100 megaton nuclear weapon. I mean. It's covered in craters and it's been bombarded for millions and millions of years. So this would just be another <laughs> another one of those for the moon itself. But it would ruin everybody's day. Um, though you have to wear a spacesuit to go out on the moon anyway, so you wouldn't necessarily wouldn't be any more contaminated than you would earlier. But you would get a lot of dose of. Uh, of, of radiation so yeah probably not the best idea <laughs> to detonate nuclear weapons on the moon let me know what you thought about this idea down in the comments below i'll see you next time take care